elements which combine to give compounds and the different amount of substances that react to give new substances. So you combine two elements to form something, maybe carbon with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Right? That concept is trigonometry. So see, which combine to give compounds and the different amount of substances that react to give a new substance, right? That's a concept of stoichiometry. Atomicity. Uh, atomicity. Atomicity. There is a number of atoms, as or molecules of atoms, combined in one molecule. Okay. So atomicity of H2. Oh. We have two hydrogen and one oxygen, making three. Number of atoms three. Atomicity of H2SO4, sulfuric acid, tetrapositive surfaces acid. We have two of the H, one of the S, and four of the oxygen, making seven. Okay? That is what we call atomicity. Types of empirical formula. Types of chemical formula. We have one empirical formula, molecular formula, and structural formula. Now, what is empirical formula? It is a formula which shows the simplest whole number ratio of the types of atoms or elements in the compound. Molecular formula. So simplest whole number ratio, right? Molecular formula. It shows the actual whole number ratio. And the structural formula. It shows how the structure of the whole compound is. Let's consider ethane. Ethane is two carbon. Good. So there is the actual formula for ethane. Two carbon plus six hydrogens, right? Good. Now, the empirical formula shows the simplest whole number. You see, this is two, this is six. We can divide two by two and get here one and get here three. Are you okay? Yeah. Now, structural formula. You try to open it up by name of structure. So, there is one, two, two carbons. Carbon is the one called tetravalency. Four bonds surrounds the carbon. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? So, this is a structural formula. So, these are the three types of formulas that we have, right? Now, uh, let's look at our application. So, empirical formula is bracket N equals molecular mass. So, you can ask you to find maybe M. So, we know the empirical formula times N, right? Because the molecular mass. Now, let's look at the application question over here. So let's look at our sample question. A sample of poisonous compound nicotine extracted from cigarettes smoke was found to contain 74.0% carbon, 8.65% hydrogen, 17.3% nitrogen. What is the empirical formula? Okay, so that is how we go about it. So we have, we are in them, right? Now there is carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, right? So carbon, Hydrogen and nitrogen. So we have percentage masses over percentage masses of our atomic masses. Okay. Now let's start with carbon. Carbon. Okay. Now percentage mass of carbon. Let's go. 74 over what? 12. Compute? 
out of hydrogen. It's 8.65. Over 1. The same 8.65, right? Nitrogen. Over what? So answer. 1.24, right? So that is what you are seeing. So the next step is to divide two by the least ratio. And let me tell you something here. Anytime you are doing this kind of work, always leave your answers in two trenches numbers. No trench number. Maybe you say this is 6.17. Then you try to run them as 6.2. No. Yes, after that, don't leave two trenches map places running. I'm going to give you a reason in the next question that you see. So multiply through. No, oh, is it divide through, right? Divide through by least ratio. That's the smallness of all, right? The smallest of all happens to be 1.24. Eh? Okay. So we have here 6.17 over 1.24. We have 8.65 over 1.24. And we have 1.24 over 1.24. So that is it. So after this, then you start running. You run them up. Again, when you are working, don't try to run them to one decimal place. It doesn't leave two, three decimal places after the doors, okay? That's the reason behind it. I'll show you in the particular way that you've been doing. So let's run. This approximately what's five. Agreed? Approximately what? Seven. And there is still what? One. So the empirical formula for nicotine. Nicotine. Empirical formula. Okay, let's go. We have C, H, N. C is what? Five, eight, seven, and N, one. That is the empirical formula. That's all. An organic compound A contains 48.6 percent carbon, 8.1 percent hydrogen, and the remainder is oxygen. That's why not. So, uh, remainder is oxygen. Okay, how do we put it? So, percentage oxygen equals. You agree? Because I have to subtract that from 100 to get what oxygen. Why? Because the total percentage in life is 100. Do you see that? And what is it now? So this is oxygen, right? Now, our normal process. So we have percentage masses over the atomic masses. I start. Carbon. Percentage mass of carbon over what? 12. Compute. Hydrogen. Percentage mass of hydrogen oxygen. Percentage mass of oxygen. Now what is going on here? Okay, so the least ratio happens to be this, right? I told you something. Don't run them up in one decimal place. Always leave them two decimal places and above for security reasons. And I'm going to see that in this question, right? Now, divide through by least ratio. Now what's the least ratio here? 2.7, right? 4.05 over what? 2.71. Yeah, yes. Again? 1.2. Good. Now 8.1 over 2.71. 2.99. Now we have 2.71 over 2.71. Now watch here. That's a little temptation here. You see, those who like running up numbers, they'll be doing this. 
instead of 1.49, you just go save and write 1.5. You see that? And it comes here, you just write 3. Now, what is going on here? So, at the end of the day, everything is okay. Then he will run again and call this 2. Wow. <laughs> that is too much running, right? And the problem is that he, he started from here. So, instead of writing 1.49, he rose 1.5. So, when he started running, he started running this one again. Right? So, he ran this one 3. The next thing is the last three. But this one, he has gone two times. Now, there's a reason. Please leave them in more than two decimal places, right? You see, the atoms do not exist as fractions, they are whole numbers, okay? So, 1.49. If I run, I'll get 1.5, right? If I get 1.5 and I run, I get 3. And I run this, I get 1. So, even if I get 1.5 here and get here 3 and get 1, see, this is in fraction. I need to work on it again, right? You can't say I want to run this and ignore this one. So the same thing should go through. So what do we do here? Since the atoms do not exist in fractions, you have to multiply through by a constant. It's going to be 2 or 3. So you try to. When you run through, you run through by 2 and it doesn't work. You go to 3. So the fraction disappears. Okay? So you try to. So look at it well. I hope you are getting the argument. If I should run this at 1.5, 1, 3, 1, 1, this is a fraction. You can't tell me to run this again and ignore the rest, it's not going to work. So, you multiply through, multiply through by 2. Right, let's go. Implication 1.49 by 2. Yes. 2.98. 2.98. Two point nine nine by two. One by two. Good. Now let's see. Approximation. This is right. That is six. You see that? And then it's still what? Two. Obviously, what is going on? Uh, what, what are they asking us to do? Empirical formula, right? They asked me to find a empirical formula, right? Yes. Okay. Empirical formula. Okay, so let's watch here. What about the molecular formula in the question? They gave me a paper density, right? Yes. Okay. So, let's note. 2 times the paper density equals what? Molecular mass, okay? Now, what is the paper density? Again, so the answer is 72 what? 4. I have been asked to find the empirical formula. Empirical formula N equals what? Molecular mass or molar mass, right? Why do you call it molecular mass? It's a molecule, okay? Now, empirical formula. I think we have to write it first, right? I'll write my breakout from that first, okay? Somewhere here. Okay, now let's go. And breakout from that is what? C3, C6, O2. So I have that, right? Now, I have C3, A6, O2. And it was what? 74. Do you see that? Good. Now, what am I doing? I want to determine my molecular mass from here. Right? So, 3 by 12, that's carbon. Do you believe that? Plus 6 by 1, that is hydrogen. 2 by 16, that is oxygen. Because what? 74. I'll get that all stuff here. I think you still get 74 and right? Or 74. And it's what? 1. Now, uh, what's something here? Didn't you say empirical formula N equals molecular mass? Empirical formula N equals molecular mass. Okay. So, the implication is that you have is empirical formula C3A6O2. N is what? 1. And I, so, N is 1. So, this is 70 what? 4. If n was to be 2, it would be 3, 2, 6, 6, 2, 12. You guys went 2, 1, 2. That is 1. 
So it happens to be the same thing, right? Coincidentally. Are you okay? Good. So if this value is here, it's fine. If I say it's fine, it's fine. So that's what we have here, right? So the empirical formula, well, why do I put this one here? It's okay. So that is it. The empirical formula A because molecular mass, right? Okay, so there is our molecular formula. So we access for the molecular formula, right? So there is our molecular formula. Okay, this N 